So korang nak tengok Nas Abdullah versi muda 10 tahun Jom okay. Ini adalah Proton Inspira 2.0 CVT 2.0 liter Ini ada pedal shift Ada auto cruise Auto climate control oh, Aircon sangat sejuk Hi guys, so continuing on my series of um, throwback reviews where I uh, recap some of my past car reviews. Today I'm going to talk about something that uh, that I noticed there was there were a couple of requests for. Today my topic will be the Proton Inspira. Now um, recently a few weeks back. Nas has uh, Nas published a video on his channel uh, talking about the Inspira as well and he has some experience with the car as well because Nas himself once upon a time was a salesman of Proton and uh, he has actually sold the Inspira during his time as a salesman uh, so watch his video to get uh, his perspective uh, about the car and you know what it was like selling the Inspira during that time and his views as a salesman from that from uh, from that period okay so for me um, the Inspira it's uh, it's been 10 years old and we all know all right we all know that this the Inspira was a rebatch Mitsubishi Lancer and the, uh, it was launched in 2010 and word about its development has been floating in the market for some time already. We knew like at least a year in advance that Proton was working on this model. Um, I remember initially that people were looking, were saying that, you know, uh, the rumor had it that this car was supposed to replace the Waja. Okay, uh, which then... Uh, during one of the press conferences, I remember Dato Shai Zainal, the MD of Proton at the time, he clarified that that's not exactly the case. Uh, they are basically discontinued. They, the Waja, in his words, the Waja was being discontinued. Uh, it just so happened that the Inspira was also, a, uh, was also being introduced at around the same time. Okay, uh, yeah, and uh, it's supposed to also simultaneously cater uh, for demand that was previously met by the Prudana V6 that was also being discontinued all right so um, at that time remember Proton had the Persona as well the previous gen Persona yeah so they had the Persona they had the Waja here with the CPS engine so the Inspira comes in and it slots sort of like in a higher segment and also uh, shortly after the Inspira was shortly after the Inspira's launch, uh, I think two years after the Inspira was launched, came the Preve. The Preve came in and sat in that gap between the Inspira and the previous gen Persona. So yeah, there was the time that Proton actually had three C segment products running concurrently. Okay. Um, so coming back to the Inspira, there was a very lengthy build up uh, to its launch. Uh, I remember actually we went all the way to Janda Bay, right before the car was launched, where we were we were invited to to take the car out on a preview drive. Right, the cars were all taped up, camouflaged, uh, but we were allowed to drive the cars. Just a winding Karak stretch back on the back roads of Janda Bay, just a short drive to experience what the car was like okay and uh, I'm reading back my review now the first batches of the Inspira they were practically CKD versions of the Lancer uh, it only carried 20% uh, minor content and uh, the plan at that time was that Proton would gradually as production went on they would gradually increase the local content all the way up to 60%. Okay, I think 60% was as, as far as they went because 
uh, eventually because uh, ultimately the engine and the transmission the electronics of that car uh, the, the, the hardware still comes from Mitsubishi so that time Proton launched the, the Inspira they, they changed the, the um, they, they did some cosmetic changes uh, they changed the front bumper they changed the rear bumper but they didn't change much of the sheet the sheet metal the me metal parts of the car are all the same the lights are identical uh, they changed the rims they proton uh, proton give it that unique rim designs to the Inspira but the size of those rims were, were, were following standard Mitsubishi sizes so the Inspira at that time had 20555 R16 tires um, which was which was a good call because the Lancer at that time had 21545 R18s it was a very weird size at the time maybe today that size is now more common um, yeah and also I think a lot of Inspira owners also retrofitted Lancer rims into their cars right but um, 20555 16 was a more a far more common commonly available size and also uh cheaper tires more comfortable right because of the thicker thicker profile okay um yeah so they also address the ride and handling proton also made uh tune tune the ride and handling of the inspira and uh, one of the things that they impressed upon us at that time was that the lancer in its original configuration had uh had rather tail happy behavior so um, the Lancer was quite easy to provoke into oversteer, which is fantastic for us as enthusiasts, but not so much if you are uh, not that skilled a driver. So, uh, as I've as we have mentioned countless times before, when it comes to vehicle dynamic tuning, uh, oversteer is yes, it's the fun driving characteristic, but understeer it's the safe. Uh, tune whereby you know the recovery from understeer is very easy you lift off your throttle you let the that, that's when you that that is how easy it is to recover from understeer you lift off your throttle maybe you ease off the steering a bit let the front use bite and off you go okay whereas if you oversteer you have to do the counter steering and all that uh, not all drivers are capable of doing that so what Proton did from a dynamic standpoint with the Inspira, they told us was that uh, versus the Lancer, what they did was they stiffened the front suspension. The front spring rates were stiffened. So the front end, okay, uh, didn't bob that much. But what happened was that they softened the rear of the car. So basically, so what they did was the first, the front end was stiffened. The rear end was softened and when you have a softer rear end, what happens is that as you turn, the rear does not, uh, it's not so twitchy, it sits better on the ground. So, um, and, uh, and what, what, what they told us at that time was that Mitsubishi engineers who came to evaluate, excuse me, Queenie. who came to evaluate uh, the, ins the, the Inspira's dynamics actually also acknowledged Proton's efforts at that time by saying that the, the, the Inspira's chassis was more predictable in its behavior. Okay, so uh, that's, not, that's something that's not very commonly communicated, but I've I, I wrote about this in my article at the time. So with the Inspira, they stiffened the front suspension, but they softened the rear, and that gave the rear end a more pliant behavior uh, when you push it really hard. Now the other technical uh, improvement that Proton did with the Inspira over the Lancer was that they've add, they added an auto, a CVT fluid cooler. Now um, this is this is uh, going even further back. 
I remember some of my friends who uh, who attended the media drive of the Mitsubishi Lancer at uh, earlier on, a few years even earlier. Uh, a few cars actually were uh, had trouble, had transmission trouble because they were driving too aggressively. The uh, CVT overheated. So uh, yeah, overheating CVTs was a known issue with the Lancer and also and Proton themselves. They had ex they have experience with overheating transmissions, the Vira one point six, the Padana V six at that time. So what they did with the Inspira, they uh, added an additional uh, CVT fluid cooler to ensure that the transmission, uh, the CVT behavior uh, or rather the durability was better okay um yeah and also here's an interesting thing the 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 inspira or rather the lancer's cvt is actually supplied from jetco once upon a time mitsubishi used to make their own in-house transmissions so uh those of you guys whose cars had the Mitsubishi 4-speed automatic, right? Like the Wa the Waja, the Gen 2, the previous Gen Persona, um, Ovira 1.6, the all those all those 3-speed, 4-speed automatic gearboxes, they were Mitsubishi transmissions. In fact, uh, my Waja's 5-speed manual is also a Mitsubishi built gearbox. But with the in with uh, with the CVT uh, Mitsubishi Motors source the transmission from Jetco, okay, and the hardware, all right, that that JF, I think zero one zero transmission is effectively the same transmission hardware as Nissan's Xtronic CVT. It is also the same CVT as used in the Suzuki Kizashi. The difference between all these transmission really, it's just the software. Hardware, it is just the same. It is the JF. I think it's the 010 or 011F transmission. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, during that media preview drive, I I, I drove the 1.8 manual version. Uh, at that time, Proton told us that uh, they were, I think, a month away from launch. They, they still managed to pick up 1,100 bookings. Uh, of the Inspira and the manual at that time accounted for 13 to 14 percent of the bookings okay um, and also that time we still had more options of manual transmission cars in the market but still they are not very attractive you are talking about like the Fiesta 1.4 EOS 1.5 J uh, even the Nissan Lusha 1.6 actually but the Inspira Okay, the, what 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 makes the Inspira better than all those? If you're looking at the manual, was that it had four disc brakes, it had rear independent suspension, you get ABS, EBD, uh, dual airbags. But what what I'm surprised to recall, and this is uh this is something that I fo totally forgot about, the Inspira actually does not have ESC. Uh, this is some uh yeah, it's uh, eh, now it, now it suddenly is such a jarring thing to learn that the Inspira does not have ESC. Although at that time, uh, it didn't seem to bother me at that time. Okay, um, yeah, it had ISOFIX. Okay, the standard equi the the safety equipment of the Inspira is standard across all variants. They were at the one point eight C, the one point eight manual, the one point eight CVT, and the two liter CVT. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, in terms of other features, the 1.8 still also had front fog lights, a sport rim, electric side mirror adjustment, all around power windows, and a trip computer. Uh, what the 2 liter mod, the, the 1.8 CVT basically comes with the same equipment. The 2 liter model adds pedal shifts, leather seats, uh, auto climate control, cruise control, auto headlights, and auto wipers. Okay, yeah, actually the two liter model was a surprise because when uh when when the rumors were floating around before the launch, right? We, we always thought that Proton was only going to launch the, the, the 1.8 in Spira because I mean uh, why would Mitsubishi allow Proton to to sell a two liter in Spira when they are also trying to sell the Lancer 2.0 here at the same time? Okay, but it turned out that they did. 
So uh, Proton had the 1.8 and the 2 liter model. And I remember during and so now here I stated during my uh, at that time when I when I drove the Inspira 1.8 man during the pre me uh, the pre launch media test drive my observations at that time was that uh, over some of the less than well paved back roads plotted into our test route the added comfort buyers tuned by the Proton engineers quickly paid dividends. Uh, Potholes and poorly tarred surfaces fail to disturb the cabin's serenity. And the best part is that this improved comfort is achieved with minimal sacrifice in handling prowess. The Inspira is best described as pliant without being soft. It leans on hard and cornering, you know, as in like body roll. Uh, yet it also refuses to surrender grip when pushed. The Inspira at that time for the record ran on uh, Continental CC5 tires. Uh, I think I also mentioned that uh, the pedal arrangement was uh, very conducive for heel and toe down shifting, but the clutch, the clutch action was very light. So I remember that though that time when I jumped back into my waja, right, um, it was a very big. Uh, there was that, that I needed to get used to it because the waja's clutch action is quite heavy in comparison. Yeah. So every time when I jump from the Inspira back to the Waja, it was like suddenly I had to use extra effort than, than previously. Okay, then, then I got accustomed to when I drive the Inspira. Okay, so uh, yeah, okay, uh, that was the that was the that was my initial impressions of the Inspira from the pre-launch media drive. Okay, and uh, later on. Later on, uh, we took the I took the test car home. I, I after the launch, I got I, um, I got a test car, and I was actually able to arrange with the help of some friends a shoot up between the and between my Y Waja at the time and the Inspira. But it's unfortunate that all but one of the pictures that I that we took that day have been lost to time. So uh, I've got a few station. I've got a few shots of, of the cars parked side by side. But there's only I was only able. I only have. I'm only able to retrieve one, you know, driving shot of the two cars, which was rather um, rather unfortunate. The other one I have is a low res version uh, that is that I, that I downloaded from uh, from my art from an article in Auto World. Okay. Yeah, uh, but let, let's uh, let's just share with you guys what I wrote at that time. I titled my my review at that time as being one step back and two steps forward. Basically, the the message behind is yes, Proton has gone back to rebadging Mitsubishi Lancers at that time, but this car also also pushes uh, Proton's technological level, the the, the product competence to a higher level to I mean basically you have to remember in 2010 the 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 Lancer was a current generation vehicle so I mean Proton at that time was being brought to present day standards okay so that time uh, the Inspira 1.8 manual was priced at at 79,000 ringgit uh, the the CVT one point eight CVT was six thousand it was an extra six thousand six thousand, and from the one point eight CVT you want to go to the two liter model it's an extra seven thousand ringgit. So, uh, basically, uh, if you look at it from these three comparisons, the one point eight CVT actually does not make sense. Okay, uh, for the price difference, you might as well go for the two liter model. The only reason you go one point eight is that you just purely want a manual car that's it um otherwise if you don't want a manual right if you want if you want to drive the cvt you just you're just better off going for the two liter model all right and uh, okay so the inspira had we are once again to refresh the safety kit dual airbags abs ebd isofix Isofix was yeah at that time ISO whether or not Isofix was standard is it's not a given. I still remember later on when the Preve was launched, 
Isofix was only available with the turbo model. The uh, IFM versions of the Prevade did not have Isofix. It also has seat belt reminders and uh, seat belt pretensioners, but it doesn't have three three point belts. It only has a lap belt for the middle passenger. And uh, and one surprise and one thing about the Inspira, okay, the now the Lancer. The Lancer initially came with space-saving spare tire, but um, Proton decided that they wanted to give the Inspira with a full-size spare. But the Lancer's boot was designed just to ngam ngam with space to put a space saver. So when Proton put a full-size spare into the Inspira, they had to raise the boot floor so that the so that you know so that they can accommodate the full size spare and as a result the Inspira's boot space now I don't know what's the what the measurements are but it's way smaller than the Lancer it's like almost the boot floor is I think at least three inches higher than that of the Lancer so think you know besides the space around the, you just imagine all that space around that spare tire there all that space like totally not usable for your luggage or your golf bags or whatever all right um the 1.8 liter model at that time had 138 horsepower 177 newton meters of torque the two liter model i think had something around 148 the the number that proton quoted was uh was lower than what mitsubishi claims for the lancer okay uh and that time the manual test car that we had, for whatever reason, the 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 the, the gear lever, all right, the gear lever was misaligned by ninety degrees. But uh, the shifting action was uh, was actually rather precise. But there was a a wooden feeling to the to the to the linkage that you know somehow. Uh, I mean, it's pre it's nice. The throws are nice, precise, but there's like there's just a wooden feel to it so uh in that sense changing gears was still more satisfying with with my waja than it was with the uh with the inspira and um the, uh, in this article also i recall i quoted proton engineers for telling us that the inspira has a more comfort bias than the waja so the waja's have ride and handling character is a more has a sportier drive than the Inspira sportier dynamics, and actually actually right to be honest at that time I did consider, uh, upgrading to the Inspira actually I did consider that but uh, but ultimately I I I I didn't but honest honestly if at that moment I felt if if I had let go of the Waja at that time. My next ride from that moment would, uh, at that point, I probably would have gone, gone for an Inspira. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was actually that the, the thought of buying that car actually did, did uh did cross my mind. Okay. Uh. Yeah. And with with a bit more uh you know a bit more insight, and I drove the car. One thing I observed about the Inspira was that. You know, it's CC5 tires, so grip, it's not, it's not outstanding. But what I noticed is that as you push it to the limits, um, the loss of grip is very, very progressive, very, uh, you know, it's very gentle. So you have plenty of, of, uh, of warning, okay? Uh, you have plenty of warning to, you know, to ease off, and correct yourself okay um yeah so it's a very composed very confidence inspiring chassis setup right i would say
mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today. Then uh, later on, I had a chance to drive the 1.8 CVT, okay, um, which I think is the weakest member of the family, but uh, surprisingly, it's not too bad. It's a decent car still, right? It drives well enough. Uh, one, the fuel economy of the Inspira 1.8 CVT is actually better than the manual, okay? And one of the reasons why is that the cruising ratios of the of the CVT is actually much lower versus the manual, right? Uh, with the manual in fifth gear, you are doing 110 kilometers per hour, but uh, with the CVT, you, are, you can pull as high as 150 kilometers per hour. And also, at, at the other thing also I noticed at that, also observed at that time, is that the, um, the refinement of the Inspira at that time was uh, was much better than, than I had with the Waja. Now uh, that was 2010. Uh, it took it wasn't it wasn't until 2012 that I finally reviewed the Inspira with the two liter engine. Okay, and that was uh, in co co in, uh, it was coinciding with uh, Chinese New Year. They gave us the they gave me the car for the Chinese New Year weekend, and uh, yes, and and I reviewed that car. Uh, had a, really enjoyed it uh one thing that i discovered at the time was uh i think i took a turn somewhere i got a bit naughty and decided to yank the handbrake and i and i was surprised at how easily how easy it was to catch the the car's slide all right it was just so much fun and uh, i still remember that after that right second day of chinese new year i just one of my friend hey come let's go and help me uh, shoot the car so we went so we went to this uh, empty uh, sort of like empty parking lot in Sha Lam was the, the surface was quite sandy lah. okay it was it's near the the UMW Toyota HQ okay it was a sand, it was a tarmac but sandy surface okay so uh, we did a lot of handbrake turns there snapped some pictures uh, for me to use in my article and yeah and th that's th that really to me is the um overriding impression of the Inspira. Every time when we talk about the Inspira, I always think back about that moment when, you know, in that parking lot with my friend uh, on, on the second day of Chinese New Year, doing slides on Sandy, Sandy Land. Uh, it was just so easy to catch, right? It was just so easy, right? I just make a turn, you know, uh, maintain throttle, turn, pull the handbrake, maintain throttle, and, you know, counter steer, and the car just pulled itself straight every time right it was like you know i could do it with my eyes closed i it, it, it felt so easy uh yeah and it is the the what i have to say is that um at that time right when people were saying that the inspira was a rebatch lancer and all that i have to tell you that even if you compare, if you were to compare the Inspira against like the original Proton Saga, which was a which was a, re, a rebatch Lancer Fiore, against the Vira, against say even the Padana based on the Honda Accord, I would wager that Proton perhaps put in more work in the Inspira than any of those cars because they properly. Uh, Proton actually fully repackaged the redid the the recalibrated the run handling of the Inspira, and I thought it's uh, it they did a fantastic effort with the uh, with the with the run and handling of it, and I absolutely uh, enjoyed myself with it. Okay, so uh, and I think today the Inspira is uh, is a fantastic used buy if you you guys are in the market for one. Okay, uh, it's still a decently modern car. I mean, if you go for the two liter model, you even have cruise control. You have pedal shifters. Um, has ISO fix, so you don't have to worry about you know not being able to strap your kit in properly. Okay, uh, but yeah, it was it's great. I mean, it's a it's a it's a memorable car. All right, and uh, it's too bad that that. That the, that the car never sold as well as it should because 
uh, it doesn't make, it just doesn't make sense to me that you know that the likes of the Toyota Vios or the Honda City all due respect to them outsold the Inspira to me it just doesn't make sense the Inspira is just so much more car for the same amount of money uh, if you were to take me back in time all right and you know back in say 2010 2012 up to 2015 if you were to ask me how you would how would you spend 80 or 90 thousand ringgit on a new car the Inspira easily tops my uh, my recommendation in fact even after Proton launched the Preve, uh, I would still probably pick the Inspira ahead uh, of the Preve. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of uh, of my recollections of what, what of what the the Inspira was like. Uh, lovely car to drive, actually. Uh, perhaps it wouldn't be as impressive. Uh, today in today's uh in today's segment but back in the context of the day right back in what back what it was it was a fantastic car all right and uh if you're shopping for one in the used market i highly recommend uh, i highly recommend it and um yeah goodbye goodbye okay all right so uh that's uh that concludes my video for today hope you guys are keeping well at home and again all right guys stay safe we'll see you on the road